Okay, awesome. Now let's generalize what we were doing with session-based. Session-based was for short sessions of a user interacting with a website. Perhaps they were not willing to share their ID or they are first-time users of a service on the internet of a website like a small sportswear website, what if you have more information about the user? Perhaps the user downloaded or accepted some cookies from your website. Then you have more information about that user. And this is going to be long-term. And perhaps the user interacted with your website for a few clicks. Then they went on to another website, interacted with that other website, which you don't really care. Then they came back your website again, then started clicking on some items. Then they went and then they came back five days from today. They interacted again. But in the meantime, you know they're using the same IP address or perhaps they logged into your system. So you have a longer history about that user. This is where hierarchical RNN is going to come in. Let's focus on a single session for now. But then we are going to generalize this to when a user is going to interact with your website through multiple sessions. A session, let's call it session M, is going to be a list of items, list of integers. So the user clicked on item one, item two, item, the last item, and N depends on the actual session that you have. So N could be shorter or longer depending on the session number. We introduced this idea before of session level GRUs. S here is your hidden. M, you don't really need to worry about it. This is constant everywhere. What is going in is the current item that the user is interacting with or is clicking on and the history from the previous timestamp. So it's going to be N, N minus one is going to give you the hidden state in the next timestamp. So I hope these indices are not confusing you. We shouldn't. M here is fixed and N is changing. And S is basically your hidden state of your GRU. And this is the new information encoded as a one hot vector. So S is the hidden state. So you can think of S here representing state. And you initialize it for the first time step to be zero. And then this is going to give you the rest of them. You're going to be doing some prediction, which is basically the score for every item in your category, in your catalog. This is all of the items that you're serving on your website. And this is basically the likelihood of being the next item, next word prediction, next token prediction, next item prediction, which is gonna come out of a small, perhaps linear or nonlinear, or an activation function on top of your hidden state, for instance, soft max or 10H. You are gonna write down a loss function. These loss functions we covered, for instance, cross entropy or Bayesian personalized ranking. Top one is the one that we're going to be using here. And it's going to look at the rank of that particular item. You look at the score of every, all of the other items. If one of them fall on top of the score of the item of interest, this indicator function is going to be one. And then all you are doing is you have one, 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 and then it's going to be zeros afterwards. You're adding them up. That's going to give you the rank of item I in the end. And then you're dividing by N, it's normalized rank. This is not useful for optimization. What you're going to be doing is you're going to be regularizing that. Replace uh, identity, sorry, that uh, indicator function, which is sort of like one and then zero. It's a step function. You're going to be replacing it by a sigmoid. At the same time, you want the rank of the other stuff or the score of the other stuff to go down because you want your item of interest to have the highest rank. This is your loss during training or loss for training. And this is the, so far, everything was from the past. The first slide that we covered last session. Now let's move on to the case where you have a history of your user in the form of multiple sessions. You're going to be introducing a GRU for your user or a user level GRU. And each user is gonna be interacting with your website through multiple sessions. The first time that interacted with your website, they clicked on a bunch of items and then they left your website. They came back the next day, they interacted with your website for
for a while. They left, they came back the last time that you're considering. So it's going to be a set of set of items. So it's a set of sessions and each session is a set of items like what you have up there. Now this is user dependent because perhaps they accepted to download a cookie from your website. Now you are able to track them. Let's look at this part first. You start with a vector of zeros for your history. The user is going to interact with your first item or with their first item, which is a one hot vector here. And then you're going to be predicting the next item. They're going to be interacting with the next item. You are going to be predicting the third item in that list. And in the end, you're going to end up with a vector of that session. So the entire session, you can summarize it with a vector in the end. That's the last hidden stake. And this is exactly what you have here. For that particular user, the last hidden state in that sequence is going to be the entire state of the session or the nth session. In this case, the first session. Initially, your user level GRU is going to have a hidden state of all zeros. So initially, you're not doing anything. And these are your user level representations. You are going to take that, a vector of zeros, the session representation. So this is S1 and C0 is going to give you C1. Now the question is how we're going to use C1. You can use it as the first input to the next session that your user is going to be working on. So C1 is going to be the first hidden state of the session-based GRU. Or you can keep it everywhere, just concatenate it as additional information in addition to the items that are going in. As I mentioned, C0 is 0. And uh, this is basically the first state for that session. This is this arrow. And then from there on, you have the option to include CM as additional inputs. In this case, C1 as additional inputs. So there is going to be a GRU here that is giving you C0, C1, C2, etc. There is going to be a smaller GRUs per each session. This is how you're modeling the long interactions. So there's going to be handshake between these two smaller or session-based recurrent neural network and the user-based recurrent neural network. In terms of how you want to do your mini batching, you need to do some modifications. So the most important thing here is going to be your user or user ID. That user is going to interact with your website through multiple sessions. So user one interacted with our website through two sessions, user two, only one session, user three, two sessions. We're going to take session one. On top of that, you put session two for that user. And then you're going to be predicting uh, the next step here. So I11 is predicting on I12. I12 is predicting I13, etc. So here you are concatenating the sessions across a user row wise. And then you create your input and output. This is how you're going to do mini batching while taking into account that uh, whenever there is a jump from one user to another user, you need to reset your hidden state for both the session base and the user based GRUs. So you have to do some bookkeeping. Then you can look at your metrics on a data set. This one I want you to explore. This has shorter user history or longer user history. And the one that is uh, doing the best here is the hierarchical RNN. And this is hierarchical because you have a user level GRU. This is the first hierarchy. And then you're going to have a session based GRU. That's a lower level hierarchy. And this HRNN all is not only keeping this arrow here to initiate or to initialize the first hidden state of your session-based RNN, but is also doing these concatenations, these dashed arrows, which is optional here. This turns out to be important. They're going to increase your performance ever so slightly, but it's increasing the performance. I think it's a good time for me to stop. For those of who have questions, I'll be around.